All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Tabitha Kimunto. Um, I consider her to be the coolest Kenyan in Glasgow. <laughs> That's <so> awesome. <laughs> I'm the plug. <laughs> You're the plug, yeah. Mm, funny story. When I first went to 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 Glasgow at Strathclyde, I was just walking around. I think our campus, and then I see her walking by, and I'm like, she looks like a Kenyan. This one, she looks like a Kenyan. Then I didn't stop her. I went and then came back again, and then I was like, hi, excuse me, can I ask you something? And then she was like, oh, by the way, I'm also Kenyan. I'm like, no, oh, really. And then she showed me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it anymore, but I don't have it anymore. <laughs> then I was like, ah, that's cool. And that actually just started our beautiful friendship for the past. Listen, one. I think it's this that you saw. That one. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you <really. laughs> So let me introduce you to Tabitha. She is a Bachelor of Applied Psychology major at the University of Glasgow Cali, Caledonian University. <laughs> Affectionately, they call it Cali, University of Cali. <laughs> She's also um, a former student ambassador at the Student Association at Glasgow Cali as well, and also a former deputy international student officer. And currently, She's the vice president of the GCU Student Association representing the School of Health and Life Sciences. Hey, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so now, like when we can we can see uh, what you what you've been doing. You it seems like you've really been heavily um, what do you call it? What is the word? Involved in student association, in clubs and societies. Like as an international student, um, what drove you to, to that? Do it. So all my life I've just been interested in being involved in societies and clubs from primary set high school. I was always involved in some sort of club or sport or society and more so in like leadership positions. So it, it was always my interest just to have good student experience in whatever level of education I was in. So when I moved to GCU to pursue my bachelor's, um, I was introduced to the student, student ambassadors program. And I was like, this is an interesting way. So it was a good way to meet people and just get to know Glasgow because you get to travel a lot with such programs. Yeah. So it was a good way to get free trips to go around and discover the city and meet new people. Yeah. And it, was, it allowed me to make an impact also within the university because we, we ran campaigns um, like the gender-based violence campaign around the campus and all that. So I was able to have an impact within the campus, which I like to do. And then that brought me the opportunity of finding out about more about the student association. And I understood that we have liberation groups within the student association. And I was like, this is interesting because usually I have problems within the university and I don't know who to go to. So I was like, why not, why, why can't I make myself available and be that person people go to? So I did apply for the job for international students because, of course, I'm an international student. Yeah. So I, I got the role as a deputy officer. So there was two of us, there was an officer and then myself. And just the same impact it had, we were able to organize events and move push policy that helps international students within the university. So it's, it's quite a place to be, particularly being, being able to make a difference in issues that affect you. Because I think that's one thing international students forget, that when you go to this university, you're the client yeah. and you need, and they need to put your interest, you know, they need to put your interest forward. And if you have an issue, because we all know we pay a lot of money as international students. So it's quite good to make sure that you get the quality you deserve. And if you're not getting it, go ahead and look for opportunities within the university make these changes possible. So that's just what drove me into such positions. And now currently VP after a very interesting election week. But yeah, yeah. looking forward to it. I just started two weeks ago. So looking forward mm. to it. Congratulations. So for all three of them, there was a process of you sending your application. So for the student ambassador program, we sent an application and your CV and Occasionally they do have interviews, but sometimes they don't, just depending on the year and what they decide and how your CV looks. So I was fortunate enough, I, I, I got, that, got that. Same as a deputy international student officer, but then I had to go for an interview, which was a very interesting, I think it was the first time I was, I was asked in an interview, what's my biggest failure? <laughs> and I was like, how do 
even answer that. <laughs> but it was, it was an interesting, it was an interesting one. So I did have to do an interview for that. And for the position for vice president, we had to do an election. So it was an entire month of preparing for that. And we had to go through um, training. We had to come up with our election teams. We had to write a manifesto. Mm. Uh, we had to go around and think about interests and talk to students and just understand issues around students. So it was an interesting time. It was, elections are hard, you know. Yeah, she campaigned. She really did campaign <laughs> online, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't know I was I could be able to do that, but look at me now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And what what drove you into now seeing like, hey, let me now just go for the top position. Let me try out the student association now. To be fair, it started as a joke because I, I my initial um, thought was finish my undergrad, do my masters, you know, move move on with life. You know, you need to push, push, push and get those degrees and PhDs. So that was my thought. And then um, one of the people I work under, so my boss, as, so he's the head of the Student Ambassadors Program. Mm-hmm. He, told me, he told me one day, you know, you'd be really good at this position because you're a people person and you've already been within the university and associated with different committees within the university to make change. You should try it. So it just started as that. And then I actually looked at the role and, and the opportunity it gave me and the voice it gave me. And I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe I should take it seriously. Mm-hmm. So I did, I kept that to myself because he told me that last year, around November, December, mm-hmm. and nations were opening in January. So I just kept that lighthearted and thought about it. And in January, when the applications were open, I was like, you know what, I have nothing to lose. Yeah. If, 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 if I do it and get in, I have a job for a year. If I don't, I have experience. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a win win situation for both of them. Yeah. So so that's what drove me to do it and just being able to have that impact within the university. Hey, I was so proud when I actually saw VP. I was like, ooh, Kenyan girl. We celebrated that night. We were very very happy. <laughs> it was a long week. It was yeah. a very very long week, but yeah. it was it was it was, it was good. worth it. So, um, why um, do you think maybe um, some students, international students who are African, um, they don't see the, what do you call it, the packs of these positions? Because um, from, from the research I was doing, because you're, you're now like a sabbatical officer in the student yeah. association, right? What comes with it? So, there's a lot of benefits that come with it. So, first of all, there's a salary, which isn't too bad. At least you can you can go by and pay your bills, but um, also on top of that, you get opportunities to meet um, game changers within the higher education um, platform, and of course, game changers in other ways in terms of like your interests, because you meet different people, different levels of the university who you can interact with. Um, you get to learn new skills. Like recently, I've, 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 I got put into a committee and have no idea what the committee is all about. So I'm learning the process of learning. So there's so many advantages to it. You get to you get your voice heard, which is quite important for international students, particularly, particularly being a black international student, because we are a minority. Yeah. So it's good for that our voice is being heard there. So that's one of the advantages you get. You get to travel. Mm-hmm. Although with Corona, I don't know how that will work, but <laughs> you do get to travel and represent your school around and, and meet other young leaders as yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's quite a good experience, actually. Yeah. So many benefits. Yeah, and you also guys, you guys have a, like a team of uh, people who are hired by the university to kind of like run the office. You guys are the student body, yes, the representatives, yeah. but also the the support, right? Yes, there is support. So within Cali, there is a chief exec and there is um an executive assistants and there's people who deal with sports and societies and like student media and all that. So we have a radio station and a magazine. So we have other people who are employed to help us manage. So we just supplement and um, get help from them and work together. So it's a team effort. Yeah. And there's also sabbatical officers. So we are a team of four and then we have so many other people supporting us. <laughs> Let's go back to when you were the deputy international um, student leader, right? What were some of the, the challenges or some of the issues that you saw international students going through? Um, and, and how did you kind of like bring them to the fore? And 
maybe some of the success stories you can also share with us. So there were a few issues and most of them were being, most of them were academic and a few of them were social. So for example, academic issues were, like, were when you come from a system that's not, like I'm from Kenya and our education system is slightly different from here, particularly if you're coming from high school and joining in the university here from college. So ways of writing is a bit different. Um, the accent is different when you're speaking to your lecturers and also a lot of international students weren't getting it right in terms of, so they weren't performing as, as well as they should because of such barriers. So they come in and writing is so different, marking is so different, you can't understand your lecturers and all that. So issues like that were forefront for us. So we had discussions with the Learning and Development Center. So we do have a center within the university that assists students uh, in whatever academic needs they have. So we, we were trying to work, and we're still working with them at the moment to look for tailored um, workshops just to support international students, particularly those who come in direct entry from college and join midway, maybe in second year or third year. So they get support. So those are some of the success stories. We got an ear from the Learning Development Center and we are creating workshops and hopefully they'll be live soon. So it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to see that yeah. your voice is hard and things are being done you know and socially of course we all come from different cultures and it's it's hard when you come into a culture where particularly there's a lot of drinking involved in social activities and many international students even home students may not per se want to be involved in like events that involve drinking yeah. so just make it more inclusive for and having the university think that there's more than just home student and Glasgow culture within the university. So c coming up with events that are away from the student association and the student bar and having more events that are inclusive, like in the Faith Belief Center and all that. So just working through such issues and other things, yeah. But it, it was a good year. It was interesting listening to all these problems and also seeing some of the things I faced, not being only my problem, but being seeing them in other international students and being able to solve that. So that was quite good. How would you encourage this international student who is joining either in the bachelor program or the master's or even PhD to be able to be hands-on and involved in what the student body is doing? Because there are things like being a class rep, you know, you can volunteer in committees within the student association. So just try and maybe give us a tip or uh, an encouragement on how the international students who are going to come in maybe from this year and furthermore can be able to also get involved. Go to the student association page, see what's available. You'll be surprised how many opportunities are there and no one's taking them up. Mm -hmm. So look at that, look at your interest. So do you enjoy representing your class, for example? Do, do you, Would you like to represent your department? Um, do you like to represent a society? Because it, it doesn't have to be academic, it could be a society. And that also just brings you into the student association. Mm -hmm. You can, and I know that the student association is more than um, happy to help students who want to even start their own societies. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like there's a gap within the university, like there's a society that is brilliant or you want to start something, so you can always look at it that way. You don't have to go for things that are already formed. Mm -hmm. So it's just important to know that you are as qualified as any other student. So, so you need to know that going in. So these opportunities are as much for you as they are for them. So just take them and apply. And if you don't get it, it's a learning process. Apply yeah. again, apply for something else, because that's how you, you build and grow and get your voice out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I remember also the time like um, when I was with my scholarship, the shipping scholarship, there was a shipping student who was like, there's no shipping society. She started one and we <laughs> all just got on board. And there are also like things like um, monies that they are given also just to be yeah. able to help them to facilitate. I remember a student started a Pokemon Go society yeah. this year. Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting. It's, I'm not interested in po Pokemon Go, but the society has members. So there were yeah. students who are longing for such a society. So mm -hmm. any idea, as crazy as it may yeah. be, the Student Association is always happy to, you know, help you um, build it up. Yeah. And the other thing is, even if you're not interested in leadership, there are also benefits to you just being part of the society as a member. 
I remember I was in Glasgow at Strathclyde, the University of Strathclyde, but I would attend events at the university, at your university, yeah. like trips, you know, events, parties, things like that. So people should be able to see that this thing um, is not just for one university. Yes, it is tailor-made for that uni, but you can be able to mingle and network. Um, everywhere it's actually brilliant that you're right you don't have to join it via leadership you can always just go to events and that's one way of being part of the, the, the association and just yeah. being, being present and meeting so many students because that's how i've met most of my friends i have now yeah. through student events since you're in scotland um and there are so many universities around and there's the national union of students nus right yes so is there a collaboration between student leaders in the different universities and how have you been placed maybe at the center of it if you have we all do meet together and we do collaborate in a lot of things and and it's because it's important because we are all universities we all almost face the same issues mm -hmm. so it's good to collaborate and do that i do know that uh, strathclyde and glasgow Cali and um or am I forgetting the other one? UWS. Yeah. yeah. In West, Scot West of Scotland, we mm -hmm. do collaborate with elections. So we have our election uh, results done together. So there's a lot of collaboration that goes into um, all involved. And we, I think we do have conferences every so often just to make sure that there's synergy within all the unions yeah. in terms of policies that affect students widely. Because I do know over when uh, Corona came and hit, um, they were working on getting refunds for students uh, who had paid for like bus passes for the entire month and all that and getting people who got accommodation some relief because we all know that funds got a bit tight. So there's a lot of collaboration that goes into place where all these unions come together and take this policy further to the government and ensure that every student, no matter what college or university you come from, you are taken care of. That's true. Because I also remember the snowball effect. Um, when one thing happens in one university and it's positive, it also just goes to the other university. Case in point, the graduation fees, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the subject was like, listen, we don't want to pay graduation fees. And it, we would see other unis also taking, taking using us as a reference. Yeah. So in the end, the student wins. Yeah, and even now, uh, Glasgow Cali doesn't have graduation fees, so awesome. look at that. Yeah, that's really cool. And I really like how all of you work together and you can actually feel that the student leaders have the, the student at heart. And you guys are not afraid to actually go to the university and tell them, listen, these are our demands and this is how we'd want it. And that is technically our job, our day-to-day. -day. We are going there to tell the university, listen, the students need to be had. It's not only about... Um, you guys, it's about the students because we are the clients. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Is it like you, you guys meet the vice chancellor? How how would you front issues? There's different levels of, 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 of governance, of course, that we all get to sit. So we have several committees which make um, um, impact within the university. So there's academic com committees, there's like um, governance committees, there's um, committees that deal with societies and clubs and student associations, student experience, um, postgraduate, just different sectors, whatever sector you can think of, there's a committee that deals with that. So each one of us has a different committee in their remits. So you get to sit on those committees. So from the lowest level to the highest, where you sit with the principal and um, the governors and, and all that. So all of us have different parts of that in our remit. So we get to choose that. Yeah. Um, and once you choose that, so you just sit on the committee and we all work together to make sure that all our voices are the same uh -huh. when the information from bottom to top, just to make sure that we are all working together through all these levels. Yeah. And yes, that's how it works. So we all sit down and agree on what areas you want to take. Yeah. Which is a very interesting experience because people might have similar um, interests. But we work together as a team, as always, just to make sure that student voice is heard from all levels of the university. Mm -hmm. 
hence why it's full time it's a full time job it's not it's like i want you to study as you're handling the association <laughs> it's a full time job <laughs> so in your case you you're done with with uni right now you're just waiting to graduate yes i'm the uh-huh. fortunate class of 2020 fortunate and fortunate class of 2020 <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> we wish you all the best it's going to be fine So for those students who maybe you were you got you got elected and you're in second year they definitely have to take like a sabbatical yeah. for their studies. Yes, you need to take a gap year um mm-hmm. just job or you could wait and like me until you finish mm-hmm. but it's literally up to you. If I knew these opportunities earlier I probably would have taken a gap year. But I do feel like I'm also much matured enough in terms of how i make decisions that this is probably the best time to have done it yeah. so no regret but if you are ready and you feel like you want to make an impact do it do it in your first year do it in your second year third year mm-hmm. fourth year whatever year you want to just yeah. get up there and and do it we need people doing it and i know a concern maybe my term is what happens to your to your student visa because if you if you're studying for that particular term and then you get elected what happens to the home office so so like myself since i finished this year mm-hmm. my visa was expiring at the end of the year so what happened is that um they extended my confirmation of student my cast number mm-hmm. so to that until the end of my term so my student status was extended till um next year when there is another election and basically you get into a sabbatical officer visa that's what they call it mm-hmm. and it's pretty much a tier 4 visa with a fancy name mm-hmm. so um you get to do your application and for myself I'm quite lucky and I'm I'm assuming all universities are this good that they help you through the process yeah. so I've got support from the university in terms of my application getting my documents together and 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 all that so It's pretty good and the beauty of it is that your visa is funded by the university if you need yeah. to extend it. So that cuz visas are expensive. So True. it takes away for you if you if you're worrying if that is your worrying issue the university most likely will pay for an extension of your visa. So that so is a benefit. Yeah, it is it is a benefit and it keeps you here a year longer if you wanted, yeah. you know, and gives you more opportunities. And how many terms can someone vie for? like in your case so in my case i can buy for two terms so oh. this is my first term so i can always rerun next year if if i want to okay. yeah so international students if you're watching this and you never actually knew that you are capable of or eligible to actually take part in student leadership as an international student you don't necessarily have to just take the route of representing the international student association Tabitha started there but now she's ended up in the larger student body where she's actually able to implement and effect change for the whole um student society so don't be afraid because it's also a mindset thing as you as you mentioned like some people don't think that they should be part of it and as you said we pay the most school fee mm-hmm. yeah and this guy i think sometimes it's a bit intimidating when you walk into a classroom and you don't see people like yourself you feel like you don't belong or you're you're not qualified enough it's it's a, it's a syndrome we all have i myself felt felt that for a very long time but once you get over that and you're like you know what we are all qualified we all got picked we are all smart enough to be in this university doing this exact program then why not get into leadership mm. it's for all of us. <laughs> and i think we need more voices particularly international student voices in in their association because it brings that diversity that's lacking at the moment mm-hmm. and, and different expectations and different cultures it makes the university more vibrant and more whole because there's more than one opinion or idea yeah yeah that is so true and especially also we need more female leaders cuz you see the men will be right. stuff but <laughs> also <laughs> the ladies also need to come in and play their part Really fun fact about um Kali I think the last 3 years student president has been female. Awesome. So that's, that's quite cool. <laughs> mm, it is cool. Now we will we'll, we'll hear of affirmative action on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> National student get out there, get involved. 
you're as much part of the university as any one of us or any one of home students or EU students. So just get there, do your thing, come up with ideas, send them around, get in touch with your student association. They are there to help you. I feel a lot of people forget to just get in touch with student associations. Just get in touch with them, get in touch with your officers of different sectors, get to know what's happening, get involved um, and enjoy your time. Enjoy your time there and just ha have, have a good time. Yes. <laughs> Don't have opportunity and travel. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Even and travel. Out. Travel. travel. <laughs> and your student associations have discounted stuff and, and yes. travel activities so always always if there's some place you want to go maybe they haven't even thought about it and you can just find <laughs> the idea and they can arrange it for you at the subsidized rate you know there's so much funding available in student associations that students don't use so that's an idea why not why not start your idea at a student association Hmm, that's something. Thank you so much, Tabitha, for joining us on this call today just to tell us the inner workings of working as a student leader and why yeah. international students should get involved in this. And I hope that the people who've actually watched the video will see the benefit of it and will have a richer student association going forward. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like it, you know, share, subscribe it. And also, I will be able to, to link Tabitha's um, contacts, Instagram, Facebook, blah, blah, blah there. Yeah. So that if you have any info, any question you want to ask her, you can ask in the comment section or just ask her in her pages. So thank you so much. <laughs> Always a pleasure.